Welcome to the Crispin Podcast. The show where we talk about trending topics from people to lifestyle with your host, Crispin. We're thrilled to have you join us on this journey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's another beautiful episode of Crispin's podcast. And of course, it's another beautiful episode and a beautiful day and a beautiful week, actually. So I'm here, of course, today as well. I'm not alone. I'm here with this beautiful damsel. I mean, you know her already, you know. And today, we're going to talk about something that is very uh, passionate to me and to her as well. So before we jump into today's topic, uh, I'll ask you guys to please subscribe, like, and share as usual, you know. Like and share, 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 share all the time. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple Music, we're everywhere. So what are you waiting for? If you cannot watch, you can listen, right? So go everywhere. We are we are global, you know. So yes, Jacinta. Once again, welcome back to Christmas Podcast. Thank you. And um, I had a nice review from your last uh, setup with me. Oh, and I believe nice. this one to have a lot of good review and good audience. I think this will be better. Okay, because now you are more prepared, right? <laughs> so now I can shoot your blaze, can oh. damn blazing everywhere, you know. Yeah. All right, guys. So listen, a few days ago, I was talking to a friend about uh, traveling. Personally, I love traveling. I love traveling. I think. Traveling is my therapy. Oh. When I don't feel good, I look for the cheapest flight to jump on. And I just and I live in Belgium, in Europe, so Ryan Air and Waze Air are my weakness, you know. Shout out, shout yes. out. Yes. So please you you guys should make me an influencer. Ryan Air and Waze Air. I talk about you I guys. Think all I the used time. Ryan the last time on your um you see? And I loved it. You see? Because I took a flight. Ryan Air, what are you waiting for? Please make me your ambassador <laughs> right now. Like it is a free sponsorship yeah, actually. Free very advertisement. Big, spacious. Yeah. <laughs> and there was no sound. Like yeah. I couldn't. I love them see. also. Yeah. Although people always people want to make it look like it's a budget airline, so it doesn't have nothing to offer, but it's not no, true. No, they do. They yeah, do. because I, I really enjoy flying with them also as yeah, well. Very spacious. So yeah, I love traveling when I'm not feeling good. Like when 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 I'm not feeling good, like you know, like emotionally, you know, spiritually actually. <laughs> I like to travel and explore. I, I like okay. to do all these things. So I'm privileged because I live here and I don't need like most of the countries, I don't need a visa to go yeah, to. Yeah, you can countries. do like sixteen countries. Actually, twenty something. Actually. Yes. I, I don't need a visa, but unfortunately for the people outside Europe, you would have to. Yeah. So, and I get a lot of people asking me, even on my YouTube, they always ask Crispin, "How can I get a, a, a visa to come to Europe and do all these things?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna help you." I mean, I give them my what I know, but it doesn't really work. So you being a little bit expert into this, coming out from somewhere that I have to go through the process. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about why do you think people don't get their visas? In oh. fact, why are the visas denied? Basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, sometimes you know people say that um, they intentionally deny the visas because they are looking at um, a quota or they have a certain number in mind. Of people that should enter their countries um, uh -huh. but if you ask me I don't think it's true mm -hmm. it could be true anyway but um, for somebody to say no to you there has to be a reason why the person is saying no to you right okay. yes and one of the reasons is because I think first of all people don't read and understand um, let me say terms and conditions mm -hmm. on this visa application forms and websites we are in a hurry to submit we don't take our time to review the, the forms the um, checklist yes the checklist even in filling the forms we don't take our time to fill the forms you, you realize that people are just typing 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 or they are just filling the forms you submit and you realize you've left blank spaces or even the inform information you've provided is not enough we'll come to that anyway so first and foremost reading and understanding before you travel before you go anywhere don't just be in a hurry to fill a visa form ask what i mostly do is Prior to months to that, I I can just type the country, maybe South Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, so you get to understand the scope, understand the country, understand how things work there. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to their website to fill their form, it's like you understand how the people do their things. So you know what they are expecting mm -hmm. from you, yes. And then you take your time to fill the form. Um, well, you can open them because sometimes they'll give you days to submit. You mm -hmm. have like hours, sometimes days when you log in or when you print out. Um, take your time to read through, give yourself some space, some days, gather all your documents. Even when you are sure you are done, don't submit because you might be surprised. 
that you've made a mistake by being noticed. Mm -hmm. So take your time when you are sure you are even done. Don't submit it. Another time, come back to it. Take a break. Come back to it. You realize that you've missed something. You've not added something. Then you can take it. Because the person doesn't know you. For the person to... It's always said that for you to get your visa, 80 to 90% depends on the form you submitted or yes or failed. Because he or she doesn't know you. And even if you go for interview, they don't have all day to spend with you. So they are literally looking at what she said. So that is one, one of the reasons why people don't get their visas. Another reason is because um, mostly we don't tell the truth. Yeah, I feel. Yes, we don't. Yeah. And you write something about yourself and all that. Truth. And I know people who do that anyways. But one thing you don't know is that aside the form and the information you are giving to them, they look for you on other platforms. So you say something, they go to Facebook and they realize that I will give you an example because I, I totally know where you're coming from. Yeah, you know, sometimes people always go like, but Crispin, you know, I'll, they will, like, in fact, I'll submit all, everything on the checklist, but still my visa is refused. And they always use this, actually, I wanted to ask you this. They always use this word, tie, family ties. Yeah. Family ties, a person was like, but I'm from Ghana, my family's in Ghana. What shows I don't have a ties in Ghana? This is my country. So why am I still be refused, you, you know? You don't have time to go through. So one thing you have to do is, if you want to prove it, you have to prove it right. Mm -hmm. For me, so for some people, family ties, maybe if you're married, your, mm -hmm. your marriage certificate works. Mm -hmm. um, if you have kids, birth certificate of your kids works because it shows that, okay, you have kids, definitely, they are not old, you will come back to them. Mm -hmm. If you work, make sure that you take an introductory letter from your office. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think that, oh, I was helping a lady out sometimes, she was mm -hmm. like, I'm just a teacher. Nobody respects GES. I don't say no. You still need it because it shows them that you are working. You have work you are doing. Mm -hmm. So let no matter what you do, let your company give you a letter of introductory letter. Even if your company doesn't, it's not a big company. You can always let your boss draft one and sign and stamp. His mm -hmm. number will be there. You can always call him to verify if you work with him. All these things show that you have a tie back at home, and you come back. But if you just I mean, get up and there's nothing binding you. Sometimes it looks scary, you know, because especially the race at which Africans yeah. are Jack Jack buying. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that those are some of the reasons. And we don't tell the truth. We if you know that you are in the habit of applying for visas, you should make sure that your social media platform matches what you put out there. Mm -hmm. Either you don't post at all or when you post and for some of us, what we don't know is that they go back, way back, when you were a young boy in SHS, mm -hmm. high school, you wrote things you were not even sure. On, 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 like, on racism, ah, on white social people, media. on social media. Homophobia and all that. Yeah, so they're like, no, no, this guy needs to be violent. We don't want him here. And stuff like that. Maybe you were insulting women or somebody did something, you yeah. posted, you insulted the person's character. The behavior. You shared a post that purported that, I mean... Yeah. All signals those, red flags yes because sometimes they go they have they have apps that take them way back they have things they search and it will pop up if it's on your website mm. or it's on, yes so there are even I didn't some, know this. yes and there are even some that will actually ask you to list your social media handles for them yes uh, well, i think i had this in uh, at a friend who went to us the american embassy yes they will yeah. ask you to list it because they are open to let you know that we are going to investigate about it yes and then also sometimes another reason why people get denied visas is because they don't submit the right documents mm. they forge oh, documents yeah. yes False ones, yeah. if you do that um i don't know the white man quote unquote they always have their way of knowing so they will find you and and especially with this one if you are not careful they'll flag you yeah for 10 so, years sometimes yes. 50 I've, I've heard a story and before. they have a database where they put that in so even if you don't get it from them when you go to another country you know they'll it. still get it yeah, yeah i mean you still saying, not get it yeah this guy i mean we know your story so we have to be careful in as much as you want to come you don't have the right documents make sure that you choose the legit the most legit way so that when you come i mean everybody knows yeah but that. you see i i sorry to like to no, interject okay. the problem now that i have faced not personally i don't have a problem with that but from people that i've heard from their stories the thing is like i was telling earlier on you have a gene documents mm. you go to the embassy mm. they deny you mm. you are desperate why 
now in a case like this i'm desperate i'll go for a connection man so do you think in this case those agents and connection guys do you think we should we should uh what else we should uh, we should encourage them okay thanks so before i even come to the connection man mm -hmm. let me add this mm -hmm. um so back in ghana i work in a bank okay and most reasons why people don't get their visas approved one of the reasons is because of the proof of funds yeah like the bank statement yes you see in as much as they want your statements for six months there are certain things they look out for mm -hmm. i can for a fact tell you that every statement you take to the embassy it comes back to the bank to confirm oh ah. yes so they scan it they scan your statement because all the statements you bring there's an email below mm -hmm which um, says that okay for confirmation contact so so and so mm -hmm. the statement is scanned back to the bank mm -hmm. to confirm okay. that okay so so and so brought this because mm -hmm. there are people who go for the statement they go back scan it edit it and then add on so that it becomes a lot yeah here. like you run the so so and so brought this please confirm if it matches what you have in your database secondly back where i'm coming from we have a we have a software for the embassies so when you bring your statement even if it doesn't scan it to the bank He's able to enter your details, select the bank, and then they will see your account. They are not really interested in seeing whether you have money or not. They want to see... Which comes in and which goes out. Yes. Like the transactional. They want to see yeah. that your account is transactional. Mm -hmm. Which means that even back in Ghana, you are not struggling. You you spend, you gain, you spend, you gain. Then at the end of it, so how much do you have left? Mm -hmm. So one of the rules that will help you is... If your budget for your trip is say thousand euros, mm -hmm. two thousand, three thousand mm -hmm. euros, make sure you have at least two times or more mm -hmm. as your closing balance. Okay. Doing that, I mean, they are comfortable knowing that okay, you have hotel five hundred euros, your trip is two hundred euro, your flight this, and you, the hotel is giving you thousand, but you have two thousand. That that means that you have extra money to mm -hmm. even cover to go over and beyond. So that is also one. And another thing with the connection men, like you were saying, mm -hmm. people are not involved when connection men are helping them. Yeah. That's what I've realized. For me, even if you are, if you are doing anything, if I want to do for some people, connection men are helping them to do the application. Even the email address they use, they don't have an idea of it. So when the embassy, I had a lady like that. She, I think she, she did um for one of the countries. I don't want to mention names, mm -hmm. but the connection man did everything. So up to and then she had an issue with the connection man. So up to now she doesn't even know if her visa is in or not. But they use another. If the man creates, you know, because you pay them, they want to be sure that they have control. Oh, okay. So they generated the email by them. So use a phone number, like you mm. know. So literally, so one thing <laughs> is that yes, you should be involved, even if you are using an agency mm -hmm. or traveling. So once the person is done, ask the person to give you the login credentials. Please don't submit to like confirm. You log in yourself you confirm you proof check yes and you you make sure that every day some of them because they just wanted to go through they just select certain things for you if you are not careful tomorrow because there was a story i think last year in ghana one um, a student was given a visa to go to canada to study mm -hmm. but i think she he or she used um a middleman and when she got to the airport they asked her um, why are you here but I think the visa they gave her was for work. I mean, it doesn't tally. So when they asked her, she it's said... It's contradicting. Yeah. She said something different from what she was holding. Mm -hmm. And they said, the form says you are here to school. You're also saying you are here to work. You see? And all was because somebody did it for her. She yeah. didn't have the whole information. Man, just crazy. So it's, there's nothing wrong because sometimes you may not have the knowledge. But if you are using a middleman, you always have to be be in the middle with the middle man let me I say mean, like exactly that. yeah i like that one <laughs> so that, you know whatever he or she is he he can't know you more than yourself of course so whatever he's writing you are checking it you are going through with him even if he does it for you in the end take the summary sheet let's say he lied take the summary sheet and mm -hmm. let that be you like mm -hmm. master it so that when they ask you mm -hmm. your form is not saying something else and then but then again they are fraudsters so we need to be careful some of them don't know what they are doing. They are just taking money from people yeah. because people are stranded. I it's very interesting that I'm actually having this conversation with you because a lot of people really want to know about of this like this stuff. But people ask like I told you yeah. on my Instagram, my inbox, always they, they always come into my <laughs> inbox, you know. And like I said, I'm a little bit privileged because I live in Europe. Europe, I don't need mm -hmm. visas for a lot of the countries. I can just take my flight and I'm gone, you know. Yeah. So one thing that I also hear people saying a lot is um they always talk about 
in fact, my question is, do we have a certain amount? Must you have a certain amount of money before you can get a visa? No, no, not really. But you should be able to prove that you can fund your trip. That is, if you are not getting a sponsor, mm -hmm. you should be able to prove that you can fund your trip. Because, you know, one thing is they wouldn't want to have any burdens. Yeah. Yes. So you should be able to prove that you can fund your trip. And you can do that sometimes by the nature of work. Um, you can do that by the number of places you've been to. Mm -hmm. So my advice sometimes is instead of just jumping to the big countries, you can start from the visa free countries. By the time you're submitting your passports to come to Europe, you've been to South Africa, you've been to Dubai, you've been to the Maldives. I've been to all those places. Yes. Actually. You see, <laughs> for you, we know. <laughs> and it makes it easier to convince them that, okay, but you let me always ask, go and you come back. Yeah. So let's give it to him. Sorry to say, but I, I always have this, I hear this myth that mm. they say, you really have to have a traveling experience. Mm. So, like, people go to South Africa, mm. in Africa, you start with South Africa, you go to Dubai, yeah. then boom, you go to wherever you want to go. Do you think those things, it helps, like you were saying? It's to an extent. But it's a myth. There are people who are first time and they apply for US and they get and, it. And they get it. So, and it's not about where you're going to. Yes, but there are some countries like UK, they will specifically state reason for decline or reason for mm -hmm. rejection mm -hmm. in a... Um, Inadequate travel experience. Yeah, but if you don't give, okay, so okay, wait. So, so if you don't give me how so, do I get that? Exactly. Of mine, what we say. If you can also give me, you can be the first person to give me the experience. It is their decision, so it doesn't make sense. we cannot, we can't say much for them, but it, it, some do actually. But you see, even when they say travel experience, some of those countries are not even adding the visa-free countries in it. So you, oh, okay. yeah. So I, I actually know somebody who went to Dubai like four times, tried UK, and the reason for rejection was because lack of. But doesn't she have the he or she have the passport stamps in the passport? Yes, they don't see Dubai as travel experience because you, anybody can go there. I mean. I mean, I think see, see, you see that you see. So when I say um. When I say they're a little bit biased, this is what I mean by bias. Sometimes they country are. is country. But you see, of I, I, I tell people that uh -huh. sorry to catch you. Uh -huh. If you don't have travel experience and you want to go somewhere, mm -hmm. especially those countries where the visa process is very steep, mm -hmm. you should have a justifiable reason. Okay, mm -hmm. um, you should you should go out for short term educational courses. Mm -hmm. Those ones you are bound to get once you can prove you can pay your fees and you are going for a one month training two weeks. Three days conference, mm -hmm. okay, you would get because it's like okay, he or she is going for a conference, and those ones once you pay, you are going to get invitation letters from these people, bills and invoices to show that you are coming for a conference. Mm -hmm. They may not give you ninety days, but they may give you five days, mm -hmm. ten days, mm -hmm. three days, mm -hmm. and it starts from there. Yeah, you get it. So you should know where you stand because it shouldn't be that okay. Um, you want to travel, so at all costs you must come as a tourist. Those those methods are a little bit more expensive, but it's easier for you and it works. And you can always use those approach mm -hmm. to enter for the first time. Mm -hmm. Then later you can apply as a tourist. Sometimes to if um, you are a first timer, it's better to do the group travels mm -hmm. where you have somebody in your group who may have traveled a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the person is the one bringing you mm -hmm. along. And if this is a person who has traveled so many times, always returns, it's easier for them to say, okay, we can trust this person. So yeah, let's let's give the group. She will definitely bring them back. Yeah, it's like always you go and you come. Like respect your duration, you know. Yes. Basically, I mean, I mean, honesty is the key, right? Yes, yes. Wow. So those are those are the things. And if you want to um, get us your proof of funds, you should plan ahead. You know the country. There are some countries that do six months, some do three months, three some months, do yeah. one year. Mm -hmm. So you have to start running your accounts. You make sure you run your account. So traveling itself is like a, it's like an advanced planning. Yes, you can't just get up and think you want to go, so you are going. Wow. You have I... to start running your accounts ahead of time. Wow. So that by the time you are printing your bank statement, mm -hmm. your accounts looks very transactional. You get it. Yeah, yes. Either like than that, you have to get a sponsor. Sometimes if you're a first time traveler, to get a sponsor works. So if you have a company sponsoring, your company is sponsoring, um. 
you have uh, sometimes like the conferences i spoke mm-hmm. of they will in the invitation letter say that they are sponsoring you yeah it makes your case because these are well known institutions mm-hmm. yes or you have somebody back in the europe or us uk who is ready to say okay i'm sponsoring the trip it helps you as a first time yeah because recently as, as i'm speaking to you now my friend just invited his parents for his graduation so yeah those I ones are even yeah so like that's just a day, one day program yeah it's so justifiable it makes sense yeah wow I mean, yes. that's very nice for me to have this conversation with you. I mean, I think we will need a second day for... We'll do part two. Yeah, part Maybe two of when this. people ask all their questions. Yes, so uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on my uh, on my podcast as usual. And do thank you have you something, so last advice for people looking to travel and any visa, something to say? And then, of course, you, you can now market yourself, you know, <laughs> to my people. <laughs> no, I'm sure you do the marketing for okay, me. Okay, sure, no problem. <laughs> so I just want to say it's doable. Like I said, read get to know what you're doing and take your time don't be in a hurry basically that's it do the right thing and and you should get it and if you think you cannot do it by yourself seek for help ask from people who have done it over and over again and it should be easy for you and last but not least, subscribe like share and comment of Thank course you. and by the way before i end this <laughs> podcast jacinta is actually uh, like traveling right now she's actually visiting belgium now and then she'll be going back very soon, of course. And if you have any questions about, she's skilled in this. I don't really call a travel consultant, actually. Something so, like that. Yeah, so if you have any questions, you might drop in your Instagram, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah, just drop it. Oh, I should you give my. Put okay. it in the link. Okay, so please, <laughs> I'm going to leave her Instagram link into the link. So if you have any questions or anything, please just call us Chris Spain on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. okay? So yeah, please. She's not an visa agent, by the way. So I yeah. can consult and help. Consult and help, yeah, I'll say, okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. And Jacinta, thank you so much. Thank you for If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please, what are you waiting for? Please do subscribe, <laughs> like, and share. Like I'll and share. Until the next episode of Christmas Podcast, I have to sign out and have a nice evening. Bye, all. Bye. Thank you for tuning into this episode of The Crispin Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on Apple Music and Spotify. Leave a review and share it with your friends and family. Your support means the world to us. See you next time.